Dear True Psychic Tales magazine, it's me again, Rasputin Aquato. I know I write a lot and you haven't printed any of my True Psychic submissions so far, but this one's different. This one's true. It took over 16 years, but the sequel to the highly praised and too often overlooked classic Psychonauts is finally here. A lot of gamers have been waiting for this day to arrive, especially after the VR exclusive in the Rhombus of Ruin left a good chunk of fans out of the mix with its high barrier for entry in needing a VR system to play it. Well, the fully fledged number sequel is now out, but obviously with this amount of time between releases, a lot of people were worried that Psychonauts 2 was going to buckle under the pressure of trying to follow such a beloved cult classic from three console generations ago. For the uninitiated, Psychonauts 2 is a 3D platformer where you take control of Raz, the newest member of the Psychic Secret Agent organization that the game gets its name from. These psychic soldiers are able to enter the minds of others and most of the game takes place in symbolic constructions of different characters' psyches. Psychonauts 2 takes place immediately after the events of In the Rhombus of Ruin, which in turn takes place immediately after the first game. Don't worry too much if you haven't played either of those though, because there is a quick recap to catch you up, presented as Raz's diary entry. The mission is about to begin. Chronologically, the game takes place only a day or two after Raz first arrived in the Whispering Rock summer camp, which is kind of jarring, but the game does go out of its way to acknowledge this in certain places. Fire at Whispering Rock. I haven't been here for... days. So did the game succumb to its own self-doubt, or has it managed to book the trend of sequel gap games that often fail to recapture the magic of the original? The short answer to this question is... Yes, you'll be happy to know that Psychonauts 2 is a great game, probably one of the best to be released this year. The longer answer is yes. But Oh, I bet you'd love to know what I mean by that. I guess you'll have to watch the video to find out. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're taking a break from the Steam Pilgrimage to review the sequel to Psychonauts, which I dedicated an entire video to about two months ago. So if you like this review, you can always check that out afterwards. Also, liking, commenting and sharing this video does untold wonders for this channel. And of course, if you really loved it, the almighty subscribe button is just there. Okay, enough shilling. Let's get on to the review for Psychonauts 2. Video games have come an awfully long way in 16 years, especially in terms of pure fidelity. That's why I was pleasantly surprised when I first started Psychonauts 2, and I found that although the quality of the graphics are light years ahead of the original, there's an unmistakable heritage to be found in the art style and the presentation in general. This game is gorgeous on so many levels, at times almost rivaling the fluidity of a high budget Pixar film only being rendered in real time. My poor old rig is getting on in years now, so what you're seeing on screen is only medium settings. The few times I bumped it up to the max presented me with a stuttering beautiful mess. Unfortunately, this level of detail comes at a price, but if you have the setup to max this game out, it is a feast for the eyes. The animation in-game is silky smooth, and every character and object have this almost buoyant feeling to them, like they're all full of squishy brain goo. Sending enemies flying is often followed by a bounce that give all the objects in the game an unrealistic, but extremely satisfying sense of weight. The game leans even further than its predecessor into the wacky and surreal, and some of the colour schemes for the levels will have have you stopping to gawk in awe. But these levels are more than just the forests and building interiors of the IRL hub world. No, you'll be entering the minds of a large number of characters, some of whom have let their brains deteriorate or have lost all sense of reality. Usually the more disturbed a person is in the real world, the more outlandish and evocative their levels are. You'll be making your way through cities inhabited entirely by bowling balls, murderous cooking competitions and libraries where the illustrations come to life. The cutscenes in the game are also stunning and are implemented seamlessly into the gameplay. Often you'll be walking and not fully realise you've hit a cutscene until you notice the amazing facial animation at work. Some of the lip syncing can be a bit off at times, but all of the character models are capable of conveying a huge amount of emotion through their expressions alone. The cutscenes all seem to use the in-game graphics, just with more precision in the animation, which really highlights just how good this game looks all the time. 
One problem I did encounter, however, was constant stuttering when certain events happened. I initially thought this had something to do with my computer, but now having seen some footage from other people after the game's been out for a little while, I can say with a bit more certainty that this is a problem with the game itself. Entering certain cutscenes and also when you break certain objects in the game, it just stutters for a split second. It seems to be the first time you break a certain type of object, like the game has to load the animation for breaking that object into the game and that causes it to stutter. It's by no means a deal breaker, but it does pull you out of the experience a little bit, which is something that Psychonauts 2 tends to do a lot, but that's something that we'll talk about a bit later. Peter McConnell is back to compose the soundtrack for the game and once again manages to nail the tone of each location and setting that poor Raz finds himself in. The familiar lackadaisical guitar strumming can be found on the campgrounds, but inside the Psychonauts HQ, the music is gallant and mysterious. Hey! Hey! Hi! Hey, cutie! Experts agree. Yet all of it has a vein of whimsy, definitely inspired by the pop music of the 1960s, especially in rhythm and instrumentation. And of course, with so many unique and charming characters, you need a great voice cast to bring to life all the various oddballs you'll meet along the way. The entire original voice cast is back to embody the roles of Raz and the other Psychonauts. There's also a whole host of new agents and villains to meet, including other junior members of the Psychonauts and the interim head of the organization, Hollis Forsyth. The teens are a bit meh and they kind of come off a bit too much like what a 54 year old man thinks modern youths sound like, but Hollis is portrayed as a confident and caring, if overly cautious leader who has everyone's best interests at heart. Every member of the cast conveys their character's emotions impeccably, which is good because the story in this game runs deeper and heavier than the original. The sights, the sounds, and the trademark symbolism baked into every little detail of the world is truly masterful. Unfortunately, this commitment to delivering an aesthetically outstanding game starts to become an issue as it encroaches on the gameplay, which we'll get into now. I'm starting to enjoy it now! Psychonauts is known for utilizing its out there level design to provide the player with memorable platforming sections, interspersed with some light combat and the occasional boss fights. Replaying the first one a few months ago, I was surprised by how well the game handled for it being so old, with only a handful of moments where things didn't work as intended. Psychonauts 2 takes everything you could do from the first game and refines it. Jumps are more accurate and feel impactful, dodging is less floaty and flimsy, and all of your attack animations pack a real punch. You'll be spending your time shimmying along ledges, traipsing across tightropes and double jumping between moving platforms, and the base controls are identical to the original but feel significantly more refined. And there's no better example of how tight the controls are than this bowling highway section. As well as his basic movements, Raz also still has access to his powers that he earned during his time at Whispering Rock, and a couple of new ones to boot. One thing I always appreciate is when a sequel to a game like this doesn't try to find some contrived way to reset the main character's abilities. The first two thirds of Psychonauts was spent acquiring all the skills that they taught at the summer camp, and they acted as sort of like a psychic starter kit. If they had stripped these away and then slowly trickled them back to you, it could have made the experience feel too similar and this could have bled into other aspects of the game. Instead, the opening level quickly runs you through each of the abilities that Raz already has at this point in the story. Although I can see how this could be kind of jarring for new players, basically having an entire game's worth of content just shoved in your face from the word go, I think they made the right choice in prioritizing fans of the original. As for the new powers, each slot nicely into the flavor of the ones that exist already. The time bubble does exactly what you'd expect, slowing down time on certain obstacles or groups of hard to hit enemies. Mental connection works sort of like a grappling hook that you can use to reach certain areas, usually hiding collectibles, but can also be used to pull enemies towards you or vice versa. It's also utilized for a few creative puzzles where you have to connect two disparate ideas in a person's mind. And finally, my favorite of the three new psychic powers is the archetype. You summon an archetypal paper double of yourself which can be used to fit into small areas and open doors for you. In combat, the archetype will draw enemy attacks away from you, and some of the nonsense that it spews as it happily skips around is pretty funny. Hit the door like a pesky <laughs> Ooh. 
Psychonauts 2 also introduces new ways to upgrade and enhance the abilities that you have. Unlike in the first game where every 5 ranks you would either earn a new power or get an upgrade to one that you had, now you gain a skill point at each rank. All 8 of the game's abilities can be leveled up to increase their effectiveness, adding new features or increasing damage. Oh, and a quick tip, try to upgrade the mental connection power fully as soon as you get it. It will avoid an awful lot of backtracking later, and you can thank me then. Your powers can then be further upgraded with pins, which are augments that can be bought with Titanium, the game's main currency. Three can be equipped at any time, and their effects range from combat modifiers to silly things like changing the colour of your levitation ball. I highly recommend getting the Rainbow Fists pin to turn each of your melee attacks into a multicoloured light show. All of the powers work quite well together, and none of the new ones are out of place for the setting or feel unuseful, but there is a bit of a snag. So by the time you finish the first mission, Raz has access to his melee attack, his Psy Blast ability, levitation, pyrokinesis, telekinesis, and clairvoyance. Apart from melee, each other power can be assigned to one of the shoulder buttons by selecting it on the radial menu, and then pressing the button that you want to use it with. So you've got five powers and four buttons. It seems pretty reasonable, considering you won't be using clairvoyance all that often. The problem comes later on when you have access to eight assignable powers. Often you'll have to assign three abilities to make it through one of the platforming sections, only to find that when you land, the enemies need three other abilities to fight, and you have to reassign everything before you can start fighting properly. Entering the menu like this breaks up the flow of gameplay quite considerably. Some of the traversal tools also function as essential powers against certain enemies, and I think grouping the enemies with the obstacles that require the same powers more often could have alleviated this frustration. Or maybe being able to quick cycle through two different configurations with the directional buttons could have prevented a lot of the starting and stopping. I really liked the game's approach to take the features of the first game and just add on to them. It made the story feel coherent and it helped bridge the gap between the two games nicely, smoothing out what could have been a jarring transition with such a large time gap. But I think more work could have been done to streamline this experience. It's not the most heinous thing ever, but it could have been thought through better. It does, however, become a problem with the cutscenes though, and this is my biggest disappointment with the entire game. Did I mention earlier that the game looks amazing, and the animations are top-notch? Well, I hope you really appreciate it because you're going to be seeing them a lot. The game has an amazing story to tell, and I loved every minute of it, but unfortunately the devs decided the best way to tell this story is by pulling you out of the game every 3-5 to five minutes of actual gameplay, and this is a generous estimate. Even in the open hub world, you'll often be accosted by people who want to have friendly conversations with you about things that don't really matter to the story. I didn't mind this at the start as there were a lot of new characters to introduce, as well as dialogue to remind you of some of the finer details of Raz's relationship with the old crew. I was preparing to settle into a 15-20 to 20 hour experience, so front-loading the dialogue like this wasn't that bad. But as the game progressed, this problem didn't get any better. Far too many times control was taken away for Raz and another character to share maybe like two lines of dialogue. The devs were trying to go for this sense of intimacy with the characters, and a lot of the subject matter in this game deals with themes of loss and what to do with yourself when you feel like you have nothing left to live for. So giving the characters enough screen time Time to convey these emotions with their facial animation work was important, but the frequency with which you're pulled out of the game is severely detrimental to the pacing and only gets more frustrating as you go on. In fact, the lead up to the final fight of the game was punctuated by so many stops to set up the emotional stakes of what's about to happen that all of the momentum was lost and it made the entire thing feel like an anti-climax, although it was narratively satisfying. I don't want to harp on this one point too much, but I feel like this went beyond a small annoyance or personal preference into a full-scale blemish on an otherwise phenomenal experience, and I would be remiss to not mention it. Thankfully, the story that's being interjected here is great. It's heartwarming and gut-wrenching in equal measure, and it takes a closer look at the already established characters like Raz and his familial strain, Ford Cruller's secret past, and the fate of Lily's father. The entire narrative feels grand, and the main antagonist is foreboding, with enough twists and intrigue to keep you guessing. All of the reveals are satisfying, and the game feels like a spy thriller in how it makes you question the motives of everyone you meet. 
I can't really say much more without going into specifics and I want people to experience this well-constructed story for themselves. It's just a shame that they couldn't find a slightly more cogent way of delivering it. I think he's put on a little weight. I don't really know if I can put a number score on this review because Psychonauts 2 is going to be a lot of things to a lot of people. It's become kind of a meme that Double Fine just forgets to actually market their game, but the love for Psychonauts and the excitement for the sequel seem to make up for that, and I think a large portion of the people playing the game at launch will be old fans. To them, this game won't disappoint. The execution is rough, but the heart and spirit that made you fall in love with the world and concept of Psychonauts is there and improved greatly. The story is more intricate, more of the lore of the wider world is explained, and loose ends both narratively and emotionally are tied up and reconciled. For the people whose glasses are a slightly lighter shade of rose though, especially those who played the original long after it entered cult classic status, may not be so forgiving with the flaws. The second half of the game turns into a far more on-rails section, and I was surprised less than 10 hours in when a prompt told me to make sure I had finished up my business in the main hub area. From there, the pacing just sort of falls apart, sending you between worlds in quick succession, while simultaneously pausing constantly to deliver dialogue that could be recited during gameplay. It doesn't make the game unplayable, it just just hampers what could have been an outright masterpiece. I still think even if you're just a casual fan of the first game, it's worth playing, but maybe wait until it goes on sale. Of course, there's another way to play this game. Psychonauts 2 launched on the Xbox Game Pass, which if you're not already signed up for, on PC they usually give you the first month for like a euro. A month is long enough for even a completionist to get through this game. In fact, I think the completionist, the, like the guy, already has a video up about it. I tried my best not to let the fact that I got to play this game for like a quarter of the price of a Starbucks coffee influence my impression of it, but I don't know if I would have been more irritated by the game's flaws if I'd paid 60 euros. It's kind of hard not to recommend playing this game for so little, and if you're already subscribed you're basically getting it for free, and the original is also on Game Pass if you want to play it first. With that in mind, this is going to be kind of a weird final score. I'm going to give Psychonauts a must play status, especially if you're a fan of the first game. Pick it up, try to get it on Game Pass if you have an Xbox or if you have a PC, I'm assuming you have something you can play video games on, play through it. It's definitely worth your time. As a game though, as a final score, I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. The game is great, I really loved it, I love the art style, I love the music, but I was frustrated physically having to play it with the amount of times that the developers pulled me out of the experience to kind of shove their story down my throat. I feel like by the time I had finished exploring the hub area and every character who wanted to have a chat with me had finished pulling me aside, the game was so quick to just usher me into the second half and set me on a course to the finale. The first game, if I remember correctly, sort of did something similar by the time it reached the night of the the first day, you were sort of locked out of a lot of the content, all of the other characters' brains had been removed, and you were sort of just expected to go and finish the game. I don't know why they've chosen this style of gameplay for Psychonauts 2. I suppose it's to, to set up a sense of urgency so that at a certain point in the story, you then can't just piss around like in oblivion where like the main quest is happening and you can just walk off forever and do whatever you want. But then they also decided to destroy the pacing by just constantly having you jump between worlds and pulling you out of the game. So it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the, the execution. Having said all of this though, if you are a fan of Psychonauts or just the, the IP itself intrigues you, I still recommend playing the game. So that's my review of Psychonauts 2. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. I know this review is a little bit late, um, so some of the people watching this might have already played the game already. If you have your own thoughts, let me know. You can also tell me over on my Discord server. There's going to be a dedicated room just for this game for the next couple of weeks where you can go and talk about the game and you can bitch at me for everything that I missed or tell me that I went too hard on it or whatever. If you like the video, maybe leave a thumbs up, a comment, share it to your friends, and if you really like what I'm doing here, you can subscribe down below and turn on the bell notification so that when I post my next video, semi-regularly, I'm trying to get into a regular schedule, but for now it's, uh, it's semi-regular, you'll be notified the second it comes out. As always, if you've made it to the end of one of my videos, 
Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it more than you will ever know. And keep hacking away at that backlog and occasionally buying and reviewing new games that come out because they're beloved franchises.